Hello everybody, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is darn near seven o'clock on Saturday evening. So that means it is time for another oh, video. Let me uh, wiggle this light bulb. Well, maybe I don't need it. Okay, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna not mess with that. I'm about to drop a light right on, right on our table here and that would be bad. All right, so any hooch, uh, let me do a quick refresh here just to be sure I'm actually transmittalating. Oh, yes, my arm is moving. Hello, everybody. You guys are early, and I'm so happy that you're here. Any of you that are in the Texas Panhandle area, I pray that you and all of your animals are safe. It's just horrific to watch. Um, it's Mother Earth's way of taking care of stuff, but it's hor horrible to see. So here's the card that I gave you a sneak peek of this morning, and I can tell you this is not my technique at all. It was purely borrowed. I, my, one of my teammates showed me a card and a video um, from Heidi at On Why Go Stamping. On Why Go Stamping. It'll be on my blog tomorrow. And I thought it was pretty genius, so I kind of had to do it right away. And I've used the Stippled Roses die set. You can see that. This is in the January to April mini catalog, so you can get it right this second. And I have used some flowering zinnias, DSP, and a sentiment from Magnolia Mood, which is also an online exclusive. Now, I will tell you, I wanted a birthday card, and this birth best birthday wishes, to me, it just wasn't as pretty as what I wanted, and it wasn't quite big enough for the space. So... I pulled out the Magnolia Mood, which has a beautiful, perfectly sized, gorgeous font, happy birthday set. So you're definitely going to want Magnolia Mood when it comes. I will tell you a funny little story, though. It's only funny. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I had a, a run in with a hay bale a week ago Sunday. And it was um, hay bale one, Mary zero. And I have an L1 compression fracture. So... I am on some pretty decent drugs. So the, yesterday when I was making this card, I stamped this image and I did my darndest to make, wait for it, wait one, wait, wait one more, wait one more, one more. Okay, there's another wait one. Never mind, I can't find it. I don't know. Anyway, I had the Magnolia Mood bundle out as well. So I spent about 10 minutes, not that many, six minutes, maybe two trying to make the Magnolia Mood die, which is big, fit this stamp, and <laughs> I just couldn't do it. So it'll help if you use the correct die set with the images. I'm just saying, okay? Yeah, the hay bale wins every single time. It Well, yeah. It doesn't help that I was just being dumb. That doesn't help either. Okay, so on the inside, I have just stamped the small flower from Stippled Roses, and then, of course, I have my... Envelope, envelope. So this will all be on my blog tomorrow, um, and my grammar will probably be correct. I don't really know. Um, fair warning, I was at the end of my uh, meds, so I just took a Tylenol codeine. So we're going to see how that works out. I'm either going to get really quiet or really, really chatty. Hard to say which. But regardless, we're going to make us a card. So to begin with, I am going to stamp this beautiful image from Stippled Roses on a piece of Petal Pink cardstock. Now, this is a distinctive stamp set, and sometimes distinctive sets and I, um, we can be at loggerheads. And I don't love how the images look always, because it depends on the, on the ink pad you're using, whether it's too juicy or what, depending on the color that it is. So what I have discovered is the most consistently good image with distinctive sets. So try this the next time you pull out a distinctive. If you don't like how it works out, use a blending brush to ink that stamp up, okay? And just ink the bead devil out of it. I'm using Tuxedo Black, in case you didn't happen to notice the lid. And you just want to get a good, good coating here. And I'm using a small brush just because I, I feel like I've got a little more control with it. To be quite honest, if I if they'd had small brushes when I first when they first started having brushes, I probably would have all smalls. I just like the control of them better myself. Okay, so when you get good ink. When you got good ink, 
close your ink pad. <laughs> Me and Tuxedo Black and Blackberry Bliss and Night of Navy. We have a problem. Then, just to hedge your bets a little bit, huff, huff the um, stamp. Just like you would if you were coloring it with a Stampin' Write marker. When you color with a Stampin' Write marker, you... <sighs> and when I say huff, it's like when you huff on a window so that you can make it fog up and you can draw a smiley face in it. Or hi, or a heart. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. <sighs> and then I'm going to stamp on this petal pink right here. Oh gosh, yes, real red. Might as well have a white t-shirt on and be eating spaghetti. I mean, my goodness, I can get that all over. Hold that for a good hot second. And you can see I have a nice solid image. I don't have any weirdness around the edges, which is where I usually get in trouble with the um, distinctive sets. And so I really, really like it. Now, I am going to go off screen and go ahead and cut this out. This is the stippled roses die, and so it will work. And I'm gonna use a sticky note to hold it in place. 12 weeks, oh my goodness, Linda, that's a long time. I just had Wayne, I bought a TENS unit, oh gosh, last year, I guess, when I was having back pain that I couldn't make go away, or knee pain or something like that. And reading all the directions kind of freaked me out, so I never used it. So tonight, I handed it to him, and I said, um, could you figure out how to use this? So he said, well, yeah, I'll figure it out. He said, are you ready? And I said, no, i got to go do a video, but I'll do it when I get done. So he said, well, I'm going to try it out on my arm. I said, okay. He's got an arm muscle thingy or whether. So uh, he's sitting in there right now, so I guess he now knows how to do it without electrocuting me. Okay, so we're just going to cut this out. And I'm going to make sure it's nice and aligned. It was not nice and aligned. It was nice and aligned, and then I moved it. Okay, there we go. So we'll get that on there good, and then put a lid on, and I'll be right back. Okay, hang tight, hang tight. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, now I'm gonna need this die again for the really, really fun part of this thing. But for now, let's go ahead and color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color my flowers. Actually, I'm gonna color the leaves first. And I'm using my light granny apple green. You know, I was thinking about this. We've got three greens that are very close together, right? Granny apple green, parakeet party, and lemon lime twist. And I always reach for granny apple green. I just love it. It is absolutely my favorite color of green. It really is. So I'm going to color all of my leaves. And this is the part where you're thinking, oh my gosh, there's so many leaves for her to color. Yes, there are. You're just going to have to cope. I am only doing this one, and the other two images are really small, so they'll go fast. Okay? But I do want to kind of take my time, because I... I've already got the cut done. Actually, I did it first because sometimes you can get, you know, you can kind of mess up. And these little guys have a little bit of leaf going up because they are buds still wrapped in their, you know, their bud wrapper. <laughs> their little protector leaves. It's like their egg. Y'all, do not hold anything I say against me on this video because there's, there's no telling what's going to come out of my mouth now. I will not share the saga of trying to get decent pain med this time around. Let's just put it out there that if you happen to, if Percocet is your pain medicine that actually works, which it does for me very well, I don't usually take it in the daytime because it does kind of knock me out, but I do like it for night because it kind of knocks me out. Well, apparently, the doctors are so afraid that I will become addicted that they just will hardly give it. They'll give me Tylenol codeine, they'll give me Tramadol, both of which are controlled, but not Ferguson, so I don't know. But we'll see what happens here. Okay. 
That was, I, I said I wasn't even going to tell you. And then I did. I'm sorry. Okay. I did try this with a dark granny apple green, but it was too dark. It, it looked funny. And it didn't let those pretty shading marks come through so good. So I, I won't tell you how many times I've actually done this image. Okay, maybe I will. Maybe three times now. This is the third time because the first time I didn't like it. So I did it again for my sample. And then now we've got this time. So I ought to be pretty good at it, right? You do kind of want to take your time because there's there's places where it's a little bit hard. You have to really look to see what's a flower and what's a leaf, okay? So do take your time. Will it be a catastrophe if you color a flower green, a petal green? Probably not. But if you're like me, it'll be one of those things where you see it every time you look at the card. You'll be like, dang it. So you don't want to do that. Don't do that. Okay. Let's see. Bud wrapper here. Hang on. Bud wrappers. Who had that idea? That was a good one. Bud wrappers. I know. I know. Percocet is amazing. And I've used it for years and years at various times with surgeries, post-surgery. And you would think that they would realize that I'm I'm not going to get addicted at this point. <laughs> Dang. But whatever. I can tell you the first night I tried, the PA gave me the tramadol and said, I want you to take the tramadol every eight hours, and then I want you to take 900 ibuprofen and alter, alternate with 1,000 Tylenol. So every eight hours I was going to take that and do ibuprofen, Tylenol, ibuprofen, Tylenol, which, just so you know, is a real pill to kind of keep up with. Well, the tramadol, mm -mm. it did not do me anything that first night. Well, the first night after after I got to the ortho guy. The ER had no problem giving me 15 Percocet, but whatever. I'm sorry, I'm rambling on. You can tell that this was a big emotional annoyance for me to not be able to get my meds. Okay, now, now that I have the leaves colored, I will color the flowers. And I am not making any particular effort to do any blending. I'm going to do a little bit of shading with some watercolor pencils here in about two seconds. So don't despair. We are reaching the end of the coloring portion of this video. Well, sort of. But you don't have to, um, you know, worry about highlighting your petals or anything like that. Because we're going to use those shading marks that those talented artists at Stampin' Up! gave us with our distinctive stamp set. And we're going to color them. I learned a trick many years ago. I'm going to say like in my very first year. Actually, I remember watching Sandy MacGyver. She did a video. And she is a very good colorer. Some of you may may know Sandy. Um, she was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for a long time. And she was a good colorer. And when our when we first had alcohol markers, a long time ago, she said, if you will, when you're coloring flowers, like if you're using a pink color or even a yellow color, if you will shade with an orange. And at the time, Mango Melody was the way to go. And she would add those orange shadings in, and it didn't look orange, but it added this gorgeous, gorgeous depth to it. So we're going to use Calypso Coral, since Mango Melody. Let's all have a moment of silence for Mango Melody, because that was my favorite orange ever, 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 in the history of ever. Okay, so I got that one colored. Now we'll color these little buds. Have to be a little more careful. A little more careful. And you might be wondering why I'm using the brush tip for these small spaces, but I have discovered I have better control with that, the very, very tippy tip of that brush than I do with the bullet tip. Now I'll go way out of the lines and you'll be like, see, <laughs> yeah, you probably should have done what you knew, which is to use the bullet tip, Mary. Uh-oh, starting to sing. I'm starting to sing. 
Okay, so there we go. So there's all those colors. Now, let's add the fun. Oh, surely that would be a terrible, terrible thing. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now, oops, sorry. Calypso Coral. Now, um, in case you don't know, we have two watercolor um, collections. This is watercolor collection number one, and you know it is because it doesn't say two on it. And it is a new one. We, they just revamped this um, in this last annual catalog. And we now have Fresh Freesia in there and uh, Pecan Pie. So those are two new colors in here. So if you have the old basic watercolor set, you might want this new one just to get those additional colors. So I'm going to take my Calypso Coral and wherever there are the shading marks, I'm just going to color. And I'm not going to get real real heavy-handed with it. You're not, it's like wearing good makeup. You don't want somebody to go, oh, what beautiful blue makeup you have on. You just want somebody to go, gosh, she looks really turned out. So that's what you're doing here. You're making this flower bloom, but you don't want anybody to really say, oh, wow, I guess you used some orange on that flower. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that would be not the point at all. So I'm mostly staying where the shading is dark. And then I'm just adding a little bit of color out where those little those little light stipple, stipple dots are. Okay. You see how that's adding depth to that? You can't really say, oh, that's that was orange or that was calypso coral, but you can see that there is some life in those in those petals. So give this a try. Don't be afraid to mix the media. Just because I used um, Stampin' Blends, I promise if I used a Calypso Coral Stampin' Blend, no, it would not work at all. How do I know? Because I tried it on the first one. Yeah, yeah. It, it took one touch of the Stampin' Blend for my brain to go, nope, that isn't going to work. You might have thought I would have been doing this long enough now that I could say that without having to try it, but I didn't. So it was a good thing that I immediately decided that was going to be my practice card and it wasn't ever going out the door. Okay, so we're just going to color these in here. And you know what? I already don't... I'm going to take my eraser. I got a little bit heavy-handed right there. You know, watercolor pencils are, in fact, pencils, so you can kind of erase them. Just like that. See? Easy and peasy. Sometimes I get wrapped around the axle. Oh, that's a colored pencil. That must be completely different. Nope. It's a pencil. It's a pencil. It'll work. I promise we're almost done. Are you guys like going and watching a movie while I'm doing this? Because boring, boring. You all need to know, you probably do know, that the 5th of March is coming up, like on Tuesday. And we're going to have all the new online exclusives available. And they are amazing. Amazing. Oh, Donna, I'm so sorry that you have COVID and you got to have a wonderful night in the ER. Because is there really anything better than a whole evening in the emergency room? No, it's that's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Donna, I hope you get to feeling better soon. COVID will knock you for a loop, there's no doubt. No doubt at all. All right, getting getting about done. Oh, thank you, Debbie, that was signed. Uh, it was the light petal pink, so both blends I used the light version on. Um, even the dark petal pink, I didn't, I didn't like it. And yes, I did try it. Okay. So now you kind of want to just check that you can, you'll be able to discern where you have not put your color because it'll look black and you'll be like, nope, that's not right. So just want to do a quick double check. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now let's do the fun part that I saw on this video. We are going to make it, this works with any large die that has an uneven kind of bottom. And what I want is a card that has DSP on the top, on the top, up here, 
and white down below. So we're gonna use this cool technique to cut out a corresponding jagged edge down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna tell you to do now, and this is important, okay? You're going to put your panel down. It doesn't matter if you put it on the white. And you're going to want to, I would put it on my mat just so that I can see how much space I've got. You're gonna to wanna to set your die on here, kind of at an angle. Be sure to leave enough space for your sentiment. So I want it up just a little bit, right there like that, okay? And then just hold it in place with your finger and pick up your DSP and get rid of this for a minute. And you're going to slide the paper into the die. You see how I have one edge on the top of the DSP and this edge on the bottom, okay? This is the edge I wanna cut and I don't wanna cut up here. So then you're just gonna bring it down and wiggle it a little bit until you get that bottom edge lined up with your die. It probably would have been a lot easier going from the bottom up. Don't be like me. Do, do like I just did, okay? So you can see I have now aligned the die with the bottom edge of the die cut, right? And then you can take the, the die cut away. I mean, this isn't like if you wiggle it, you're dead, it's done and it's over. But, you know, try to keep it where you want it. And then we're going to run it through the cutting machine just like this, okay? I'll be right back. And what you end up with is two pieces, okay? Now, <clears throat> you will see there's a little bit of divoting. That I just made that up. Divoting, divotizing. Are they doing away with the catalog? No, no, they are not. But the thing that is cool about online exclusives, so a catalog, I don't know if you guys know this, but the book catalog that you are looking at right now any book catalog that you're looking at right now, they started two years ago, designing and laying out and doing all of that. So in that two years, anything that happened that they said, oh man, look at this new trend, or look at this new idea, or look at these new colors, or look at whatever, they can't implement that until a catalog two years later. The online, and part of that is because of the print cycle, right? It takes so long to get everything laid out and set and edited and then printed. So that is a limb fact for them. So online exclusives means they can go, oh my gosh, red plaid is really in. R little red wagon, little red wagons, okay. <laughs> Hello, Tylenol codeine. Little red wagons are really popular and fruit baskets. Let's gin out some stuff and they can just pop that into the online store really, really easy. So that is the reason that there's online exclusives and that they're becoming more. It's so that you can have more current things more quickly. So that's that's the thing. All right, so now you have these two pieces. This is an extra, you don't need it. And what's gonna happen is, we're going to adhere this to the top of this piece of basic white. Now, little tip I learned. Don't do this until you got your sentiment where you want it and on straight, okay? Just throwing that out there. Because if you do, when you don't get it on straight, then you've just lost your die cut. Ask me how I know that. Go ahead, I'm waiting. You know how I know that, because I did it. All right, so this happy birthday, which is from Magnolia Mood, I am going to stamp. No, Mary doesn't need the latte set right now. Mm -mm. Actually, it's a little worrisome that the Tylenol is doing this to me because I'm hoping it's because I was already jazzed because I like doing these videos and that it won't keep me awake until midnight. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this in the bottom corner. And I know that this stamp's a little bit crookedy, so I'm going to lower that. I'm going to lower that happy side just a little bit. 
I have to hold my breath. Okay, Whew. got that on straight. Now, if I hadn't, it turns out that when you're doing a card like this where you're covering the top, you don't just have two sides, you actually have two sides and two corners. So you have four opportunities to mess up before you have to get another piece of cardstock. I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Alrighty, now, can you cut from the bottom up and stop? Yes, you certainly can. You certainly can do that. Um, it takes a little more finesse, but you absolutely can. And part of the reason that I didn't is because it's really hard to say that in words. <laughs> and so, and explain it to somebody who hasn't seen it. So when I'm writing my blog instructions, that becomes, that becomes something I have to think about. But yep, you can absolutely do that. Okay, now I'm going to take a liquid glue and I'm gonna get it all over down here in these little nooks and in these little crannies. Is this a nook or a cranny? It could be either or both. Yeah, I'm wired for sound all of a sudden, dude. I just like doing this with you guys, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. And then just be sure you put it on kind of straight, hence the liquid glue. Kind of line up the edges good, line up the top good. Get it lined up. Make sure it's lined up. Mm -mm. It's not. There we go. See, liquid glue, you get a little bit of grace. A little bit of grace time. All right. And there we go. So that should be good right there like that. Okay. Now, what I am going to do... <laughs> What I am going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to my mat. My mat. Oh, thank you, Bree. That's very kind. I do like to teach. You may or may not be interested to know that I do have a master's degree in adult education. I know, I know. <laughs> not just a pretty face, which I'm not at all. Okay. So there's that. Now, I'm going to pop this on with dimensionals. Because why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I use dimensionals if I could? Better living through chemistry. That is exactly right. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll see. I think I can do it. We're going to see. Now, I'm going to be... I know I'm usually very sparing with the dimensionals, said Mary Never. But I'm going to, I really kind of want to get all of these little leaf guys kind of suspended here and supported. Suspended and, oh, a dimensional cover is not going to do a diddly or squat. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I will take all these little covers off. That was a lot of dimensionals, wasn't it? But see, when you cut them in half, you're really only using half as many. You can put twice as many sticky, foamy things on, but you're still only using half as many sticky, foamy things. That's uh, merry math for you. That's like saying, well, if you buy one, you get one free, so I might as well buy two, right? I mean, isn't that what, what you do? Oh, you guys, don't forget. I, this is random association here right now. Free shipping at Stampin' Storage through the end of the day. That's on everything. Just saying. All right. Now the next trick is just lining this up with the die cut. And you can just kind of start at one edge. And then keep your fingers under it until you see where you're at. And there we go. Okay, now, Farrah Fawcett bow is the last thing. Now, for a Farrah Fawcett bow, this is also called a double loop linen thread bow. I just call it Farrah Fawcett because it, it's a pop culture reference. Uh, yes, ma'am, I was, Brie, or B, B, Pre. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been calling you Brie. I'm sorry. All right, now, I was in the Air Force, though, yes. I was never stationed at Warner Robins. 
but I went down there a few times because the depot for the C5 was there. Sorry, random, random, random. Okay, to make a double loop linen thread bow. Now, if this is too fast for you and you need one, I have actually made a short out on my YouTube channel on how to make this, and I did it um, in pretty much real time, so it's a lot easier to see. So if you want to see that, you can definitely go, go find that. Okay, keep your linen thread on your spool. Hold the end between your thumb and your forefinger, and then you're going to wrap it around four of your fingers four times. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then you're going to wrap around two fingers four times. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then once you have that done, you're just going to slide it off, still holding, hold, 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 still holding, and then you can cut the little tail there. Now, what that's going to get you is two loops kind of looking like that. So then you bring the far edge of the larger loop together with the small. Okay, you ready to see? And I'm going to take this hand over and make a figure eight like that. And then I'm going to hold that. You see the figure eight? I'm gonna hold that, and then I'm gonna use my tweezers. We did? How did we meet in Warner Robin? Oh, 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 uh, were you at one of Sandra Hernandez's stamp uh, days, maybe? Or did we meet when I was in the Air Force? Okay, if you don't have a pair of, of reverse tweezers, just get them. Get them on Amazon, EK Tools, uh, they are the best thing since sliced bread. And they will give you a third hand, just like that. So then you're going to cut another length of linen thread. And you're going to slide it through there. And you're going to tie a knot around that where the two loops have come together. Okay, don't get your, try to keep your tweezers out of it. It just makes life harder if you don't. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can fix it, but it makes it harder. And then I just do another overhand tie, like so. And then you take your tweezers off. And then, this is why the Farrah Fawcett reference. You, try, you just kind of want this to be loose and messy, like Farrah Fawcett's hair always was. Okay, just kind of pull it apart until it's so pretty. I love these bows so much. And then you're gonna find a spot to put it. And I am gonna put mine right there. I want to adhere it to the card front, not to that popped up piece. And I'm just gonna use a glue dot to do that. Oh, 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 I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I don't, I do remember speaking. It was at one of the very first ones, huh? All right, so then we're going to put our glue dot right there. Keep your little tails down and stick her hair right there. Okay, and then you can trim this off like so. I always feel funny holding all four of them and then cutting because I feel like I'm doing a bowl, a bowl cut on her. <laughs> it's going to look weird. Okay, so there you go. Do not be afraid to let the little tails cover your sentiment. It's, it's, I think it's part of the, the fun of layering and, and decorating, okay? So that's just me. If you don't like that, then, you know. No, Susan, I promise the bow is easy peasy. It really is, it really is. Oh, well, I'm glad you remember, B, and thank you so much for that. Now I'm gonna use some of the Petal Pink. This is the Petal Pink and Pretty Peacock Foiled Gems, and I'm gonna put a couple, three on my front, and I'm gonna put one right there. That's a big one. I want the little one right here. I think I'll go right there. There we go. And then another biggie one, a biggie one over here. And that's our card front. Isn't that fun and so pretty? I've got something right there. Let me grab my rubber eraser here. And see, hopefully that's just a little bit of glue or something. Yes, indeed. Okay. Don't have a rubber eraser? Get a rubber eraser, for goodness sake. Okay, now, on the inside and the envelope, I am going to stamp this small image from Stippled Roses. Oh, I got some 
XX ink. I'm going to do the same thing here that I did with the large image, and that is color this up with the blending brush. Huff it, and then stamp down in the corner, like so. Uh, perfect. And then I'm going to do the same on the envelope. Oh, oh. Phew. Phew. that was close. That was so close. Give it a good inking and then cover this accident waiting to happen. <sighs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate that very much. Oh, dear. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can erase that. If I can't, I'll just grab another envelope. Just a minute. Where's that ink eraser? Here we go. If you don't have a sand eraser, get one. Just saying. Well, that's not going to erase. I'll do something with that later. Because I can't, I can't in good conscience do that. I can't. I just can't. See why that happened? Do you know why that happened? Because I closed my ink pen before I actually stamped. Hello, don't do that, Mary. Don't put your cart before your horse. Don't count your chickens or mm, something like that. <sighs> something about chickens, counting them before they're hatched. There we go. That's a Mobetta. Now we'll close this ink pen. And then we're just gonna color this again. Now, it's gonna look different, why? Because it's on white, not on petal pink, but that is okay. It's still going to be beautimous. And I'll color my flower with the light petal pink still. If you feel like you wanna pull the dark one in for this side, you sure can, but I like the light. Also, it will help when you're using blends if you come at your line from the inside, you see how I didn't try to come down to the line? I'm going up to the line. That makes it just a little bit easier to keep that ink in. You want to stop short of the line when you're coloring. If you get right up to the line, you may get a little bleed over that you don't love. Okay. When I do my envelope, I am going to because I'm using blends, I'm going to stick a piece of acetate in. This is just the acetate from a photopolymer stamp set. I save them because they're handy. And that will keep me from uh, bleeding through. Because sometimes when I'm in a hurry, like I am right now, because I feel like we've gone way over, because I think we have, even though I feel like I'm talking a thousand miles an hour, there was a lot of coloring. When you get heavy handed with blends on the front of a of an envelope, you may get some bleed through that you don't love. So put that acetate on just as a like a precaution. Okay, and then we'll come in with that light granny apple green again. Also, when you're coloring the edges of an envelope, go from the inner part of the envelope out towards the edge. Don't color this way. It helps to keep it from bleeding to the back. I mean, you may not get head up about bleeding to the back, but it bothers me when I do it. So there you go. And you can just practice the same technique when you're using on your inside. I had to stop talking because all of a sudden I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And then we'll color these with this old olive. Now I know that old olive with granny apple green seems a little counterintuitive, but there's a lot of colors of green in the in nature. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit of extra color. And then Calypso Coral to color the shading areas. Oh, I love this stamp set. It is so pretty. The way they've put these the stipples in to give the shading is just perfect. If you just color and add the shading in those areas, you can't you can't mess it up. You just can't. 
This is why I could never be a design artist at <laughs> Stampin' Up! Because I have no art in me. I need to do what other people have done. I use what other people have done. All right. And don't count your chickens. There it is. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and don't count your chickens till they're hatched. There it is. There you go. I was definitely mixing up those little homilies. Aren't those homilies? Man, I'm... Poof. All right. There we go. Okay, and there we are. Now we'll just mat this on Granny Apple Green. No, Stampin' Storage is not part of Stampin' Up. No, it is not. It is a wonderful um, stamp supply organization company, and they make the very bestest things. They do, they do. I have almost everything I have is Stampin' Storage to keep my Stamping Up things in. All right, obviously I better put that right in the other way. I mean, I guess I could have that rose in the top right corner, but it seems a little weird, doesn't it? Okay, I'm using a basic, thick basic white card base. Oh, thanks, Linda. Well, you guys, it. I'm just gonna say, last week I couldn't have done it. I just couldn't have sat long enough to do it up. I was spending time in bed, but it does, obviously, you can tell by how fast I'm talking. It gives me a boost doing these with you guys. I enjoy doing them, so. Okay, make sure I put it in right side down. Okay. I don't use white card bases very much, but it just seemed appropriate in this case. I'm gonna close this. And I'm gonna pop this on with my dimensionals. So what did we learn today? We learned a cutting technique so that you can have your DSP on one side of your card panel and white or another color on the other side. Uh, we learned how to use blends mixed with watercolor pencils to color. And we learned that adding Calypso Coral to pink makes for a pretty nice shading combination. All these things we learned, oh my goodness. And we probably learned that we want all the things that are coming on the 5th of March. I'm sure that's what you guys figured out. Come on, dimensional cover. I know, I have the whole shoot and match, Kathy. I just love them. They're so well made. And it's funny because the first one I bought, my husband, who is a wood worker. He was like, Mary, that is so expensive. Those are so expensive. And then the first one arrived and he was like, oh, yeah. This is well worth that money. He said, this is well-made stuff. And I have traveled with mine. I have literally put my um, stamp pad and ink refill marker holder, my big one. I have picked the whole thing up full with all the colors and put it in the back of my car and driven it through four or 500 miles to a hotel and put it in the hotel and set up a craft room. So it's very, very well-made, very sturdy worth every dime. Now, we only have one more thing, and that is to decorate our envelope flap. Well, that is true. It is not fun time in the ER, but watching some of the other people is good. Although, if y'all are squeamish, don't listen. If there are people who have stomach ailments and they're throwing up, that stops being amusing to me because I, I tend to be a sympathetic thrower-upper. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> also, there's nothing enough fun that I really want to go back and do it anytime soon. Although I did have a really cool ER doc. Although he thought it was funny when I said, so, L1 compression fracture. Going to be able to go on my vacation? It's, he said, what is that? He said, I said, it's a cruise. He said, when? I said, oh, the end of April. And he goes, no, 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 no. You're probably not going to be able to do that. And my heart sank and my stomach flipped over. And then he goes, you're going to have to give those tickets to my wife and I. And I was like, okay, you're messing with me. That wasn't funny. It was a little funny, but it wasn't funny. <laughs> but he was a good guy. I liked him a lot. 
All right, there we go. And there is our card. So try this technique out. Try coloring the um, stippled roses with your blending brush and see if you like that. And I appreciate you spending part of your weekend with me. Y'all have a great time. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.